Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and we do different watercolor projects every single week. And we do steps and we tell you all the stuff we use and we try and just make it fun and simple and accessible. So if you're new to watercolor, you can totally still do this. And um, yeah, that's it. That's the point of us, making art easy and fun. And beautiful. This is what we're painting today. An octopus. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Octopus here. We are using three colors. We're just using Tahoe blue and amethyst and black, which is essentially black, blue, and purple. So whatever paints you're using, grab those three colors. Also, you can paint your octopus whatever color you want. It's your painting. It's your life. Do what you want. Also, we have an outline for this. So if you have our subscription or ordered the kit, an outline should be included. Um, if you do not have those things, you can still paint this with us. You can get our outline for free on our website, letsmakeart.com. Just find the Octopus Project, click on outline. You should be able to print that at home. Um, and we use graphite paper to transfer images. This is what it looks like. I go over how to use it in lives, but if you don't know how to use it, um, feel free to just use that Google and it's pretty straightforward. And you can do that. Was that rude? <laughs> Maybe you should cut that out. I, <laughs> I didn't mean that for it to be rude. I'm sorry if that came off rude. I did not mean for it to be. Um, we are using two brushes, a round six and a round two. Again, it, these are really high quality brushes. They're what I use and other watercolors use in their personal work. You can also get those on our website, letsmakeart.com. If you see jumps, it's because I was saying things that just weren't true. The screen goes black. <laughs> or like it's a beep over everything that I'm saying. Oh, well, that'd be fun. That would be funny. That'd be really funny. <laughs> you put words in front of it like, She's she not was cussing. not supposed to say this. <laughs> okay. Anyways, back to what we're doing. So uh, we have six steps for this, which might seem like a lot, but it's really just because this octopus has a lot of layering. And so we kind of have to do it layer by layer. So the very first step is we are going to do the all over body wash. Um, the second step is we are gonna put in our shadows. Step th number three, we are going to do the soft wash on the bottom of the arms. These are not tentacles. Learned that. These are octopus arms. Uh-huh, Google it. What? I know. It's true. Google it. Okay, <laughs> Keenan, look that up. Make sure I'm right before I keep on going, but I'm fairly sure. So we'll do the soft wash on the bottom. That's gonna be step three. Step number four, we're gonna work on the eyes. Step number five, we are going to do the little suction cups on the bottom of the arms. Now that, I'm not sure if that's the correct term. Maybe Keenan can look that up for me. And then um, the very last step is details. So it's just kind of going back, making sure all of our things are colored in and how we want them to be and all of that stuff. Uh, I'm going to start off using a mixture of my Tahoe Blue and my Amethyst. Now, what you might not know about liquid watercolors is they are reusable. So if they're dried on your pan or palette or whatever you're using, you just add water to them and they come right back up. So keep that in mind. Also there, our neighbors are um, remodeling their building. So you will he hear construction, okay? Maybe some saws. Maybe saws, some pounding. Hopefully no shouts of pain. <laughs> That's. But it's possible. But it would kind of be interesting because it it's like be. it's like another story going this on video behind. Would be a lot longer. <laughs> <laughs> Let's focus, okay? We we gotta bring this back down, Keenan. This okay. is what happens when we're hungry. <laughs> this is what happens when we're hungry and trying to film. So I'm gonna start off by filling in the body. Now there are some marks here that we're going to try and avoid. Um, there's a couple here on the top. Like there's three right here and that's because those are gonna act as our lighter values or our glares. So avoid those in the beginning as well as what's behind here. And then the underneath part of these appendages, we are not going to paint yet. So I just want you to start by picking up some paint and we're also going to avoid the eyes. So I'm just kind of painting around that. And I always like to 
pick up some color, lay it down, and then I just rinse my brush a couple of times, hit it off the side, and really just use water to spread this color out. And I like doing that because one, it doesn't use as much paint, and two, you're going to get different values and different textures using this technique. If I were to use the same pick up blue, lay it down, spread it out, it's just gonna be a single value, and you always want value variation in your paintings, for the most part, unless I specifically tell you to have an even value. Which we don't generally say you have to do what we do, right? I usually tell you you can do whatever you want. I just tell you what I'm doing. But of course, it's your painting and you absolutely can make your own creative decisions. So don't feel pressure to do exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm avoiding these spots on the top, at least for now, I'll go back in those and color them a little bit later. And then I'm gonna keep on going for the rest of the body. Now I'm using my round six for this. I'm also picking up um, purple to get more of a purple color here and there. Again, because we kind of want that color variation and we want that value variation. Also feel free to um, like drop in water droplets here and there for texture. Now I know um, we have a wonderful Facebook group where people share their artwork and they can ask questions and it's this great place called Let's Make Art Together. And sometimes people post their work and they get like these kind of blooms or different textures and they get mad and they're just like, these keep on happening, how do I stop them from happening? And I just wanna be like, don't stop them from happening. It's the coolest part of watercolor is these um, accidental textures that happen just how the water and the paint is applied to the paper. It's my favorite part, um, but it is, if you're not used to it, you think that it's bad and that it's wrong and it's you know making your painting look bad, but I honestly believe it just adds more interest to your painting, so don't feel like uh, it's okay to have these funky textures going on in your painting. I really believe that's what makes it cool. So I'm just gonna keep going. Now when I get to these thinner areas here, I'm gonna wanna hold my brush more up and down because that's gonna give me a point here. And of course, outlines are just guidelines. They're not, this isn't a coloring book. You're not gonna fill this in exactly and stay within the lines. We want you to just use them as guidelines so you remember like, oh shoot, you know, this part ends here or this is where a shadow go goes in, that kind of thing. So don't stress out if you forget to draw a line, you can just eyeball it in, or if you're getting, uh, if you go outside of your lines, that's okay. That's just you making it more of your own, which is always a good thing. Now I'm letting my um, my areas kind of overlap here because when you let, um, like for example, this appendage here or this arm, it's a pretty smooth transition, which is really beautiful. And if you like that, you can keep it. For me, it's like a little bit too clean where I'm just like, no, I kind of want to like mess it up a little. So you can go in with a damp brush and just kind of like work an area back and forth. You can put in some water droplets here and that is going to break up that really smooth transition. And that's just because I like that look personally. So that's why I'm doing that and that's how you do it is you just kind of do layers on top of each other. You go in with water and do some drops or you go in with color and do some drops. Like I'll do that over here. I'm just using pure color here. You're just gonna keep going around. Now I want this value to be a little bit on the darker side, which just means you're going to have more paint than water. 
And the reason for that is because we want there to be a clear difference between the top of the arm and the bottom of the arm. And the easiest way to do that is just having a clear value difference between the two. So I'm gonna have the top of the arm darker and then the bottom of the arm a lighter value. And then that way it's a little bit easier uh, for our viewer to tell what's going on with that arm. Now you can have it opposite. You can have a darker bottom and a lighter top that will do the same thing. The reason why I'm not doing that is because the little suction cup things, did you look up to see what that was called? Will you do that? <laughs> The little suction cup things on the arms, those are going to be done using a really dark color. Um, and so they'll show up more obviously on a, on a light wash background than a dark wash background. So that is why I'm doing the arms lighter. And you have this guy back here behind it. Now when you're filling in thicker areas like the head or the thicker part of the arms, you can use your, have a more horizontal hold on your brush, which is it's more on the side. And you can use the entire belly of this brush to get a thicker stroke. So don't feel like you have to go in at the tippy top and make all of these marks to fill in a space because look at how many marks I have to make to do that. Or you can just go in and use the side of your brush and you can fill that same space just using the side. So really play with um, how you hold your brush, the side of it, all of that stuff. And then I'm just gonna go in and these spaces that I left a white, I'm gonna just use a damp brush and kind of use the paint that's already there to kind of go over them now, like on this side, I'm gonna leave a little section still white. And the reason why we're doing this is because octopuses, oct octo single octopus, is that octopi? I don't wanna make any guesses. <laughs> uh, they're wet. So when something is wet, there's usually like a glare from that moisture. So I'm leaving some white spots there as the glare. And then the back of the head is also a lighter value. So I'm just using the paint that's there to fill that in. And again, I feel like my head is just a little bit too smooth. I want some interesting textures going on. So I'm gonna do another layer with some color. Drop in some water. And also drop in a little bit of color here and there. And that is gonna give us some cool things going on. I got some info for you. Okay, I'm ready. So the suction cups are actually referred to as just suckers. Okay, great. <laughs> um, and then this great wonder how to site likes to mock people who say octopi. Okay. So it says, it says uh, modern usage of octopodes, which is the Greek word that octopus come from. Uh -huh. The plural is octopus, so you were right. Okay, so it's an octopus and octopuses. Yes, but many people mistakenly create the erroneous plural form, octopi. Okay, I might have put octopi in the step-by-step -step sheet. Sorry if I did that. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not even gonna look. Don't tell me. I don't need to know all the mistakes I make. Uh, but it's octopuses yeah. and octopus. Okay, great information. So we just finished step one where we did our entire body wash. Now we're gonna move on to step two where we're gonna, just gonna put some shadows in. Now uh, in the outline, you'll see that there's like a section around the eye, around the eyes that are circled. That's because those are shadowed. And then there's a couple like in between the tentacles and there's some back here. Um, so here's the outline if you guys wanna, don't know what I'm talking about. So like this section right here in between the eyes and underneath them, this section right here, this section here. Those are gonna be our shadowed areas. So I'm just gonna do another layer on top of what I already have. And I'm gonna add just a tiny, tiny bit of black in there to give it a darker color. And the reason why we have a shadow kinda on the back part here is because the head itself is casting a shadow. And also like in between the tentacles 
it's just going to give us some three dimensionality. Is that a word? That's a word. Three dimensionality? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Sure. Great. Um, because we want it to show that, like, they're kind of curving. The, the arms themselves are three dimensional, and so the top parts are going to be lighter, and the edges are going to be shadowed because they're coming going away from us underneath. Um, so just kind of where they meet here, we'll do a little bit of shadows. And then we're going to do shadows underneath the eyes, and that's because we want to make it super clear that the eyeball part of the octopus is out away from the body. So how to make something recede is you give it shadow, and how to make something pop out is to have a lighter value. So even though we have outlined sections for our shadows, we don't want it to feel blocking. We, we want it to be a smooth transition. So I put in my shadows, but I want to blend out this really hard line. So I'm going to take my brush that's damp. So I'm going to hit it against my cup. I'm going to put it off on my paper towel to get rid of that excess water so it's still damp. And then right where it's meeting that line, I'm just going to blend out. And I, that's just because we want a smoother transition. We don't want like a hard line. Now, the longer you let something sit and dry, the harder it will be to blend out a line. So uh, I was just chatting for a lot of times and stopped painting for like 20 minutes. So that line is not blending out very well. If that's happening to you, don't stress. What you can do is you're just gonna go in and pick up a color and then use that color as kind of like a, an uh, like in-between color between the, the line and what we're trying to blend to. Does that make sense? So I'm just I just picked up like a medium wash and I'm using that to blend out and that will also give me a smoother transition. And look how cool these textures are on my head. By dropping in that water and dropping in that paint, it dried and you can get some really funky stuff. Remember to embrace those, it's the best part. Okay. That is looking good. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, great. Now we are going to move on to the doing the soft wash on the bottom of the arms. Now I know I already talked about how you can tell the difference between the top and bottom by using values. You can also do it through color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a light wash of a more purpley color. So I'm just gonna pick up that amethyst and put some water in there. And I'm just gonna use this really soft purple on this bottom here. Now it's okay if it touches that blue and it kind of that line bleeds. I think it has a really cool effect so that's not going to bother me. Um, so I'm just kind of painting over the entire thing with this mostly water light purpley wash. Now if you want it more purpley and when it gets to the corners here, like where, where those arms are meeting the body, we do want it to get a little bit darker. So you can just do an extra um, layer, just right on top of it. And do this part. And this color is gonna look barely there, but that's okay, that's kind of what we want. nails. <laughs> is that what that is? Yep. Nail pulling. Okay, so we have the bottom of our arms done, and this is where you can kind of look at it and say like, like for me, I feel like all of my arms look pretty good, but this one, I feel like the top part is pretty light. I'm going to do another layer right on top of it to darken that top part because I want to make it super clear what the top and the bottom are. So it's just one more little swoop. And 
and also maybe this. And we're doing this after because sometimes when water touches the paint, it might blend out a lot. So we lose that darker value by putting in that light color underneath. So that's why sometimes you got to go back and touch it up. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, now we are going to move on to the eyes. We're gonna let this dry. We do not wanna do our suckers, which is the technical term, right now because if this is wet, then they will not keep those sharp lines that we wanna keep, and so we wanna let that dry, and then we'll do a layer on top of that. So, I'm gonna move to my round two. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to do a light wash around. So there's little tiny circles in the middle of the eye. I'm going to avoid those at first. So I'm just going to do this light wash over both of them. And then what I'm going to do, because even the rings themselves, we want them to be more dimensional, is I'm going to do another layer on the top half because I want it to be a darker value. And I do kind of have an outline there of how far we kind of want that to go. But remember, it's just a guideline. You don't have to follow it exactly. And we do want the transition to be smooth. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, I'm not gonna do the black part of the eyeball yet because it's still too wet and we want that black part to be sharp. If I put it in now, it would bleed out everywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, see if I'm ready to do section cups, which I am. I'm just touching my paper to see if it's dry, and it's dry. So for the little suction cuts, there's two things I want you to keep in mind, which is we want these values to be darker. So that's just gonna mean more paint then water and maybe mix in a little bit of black in there to make sure it's nice and dark. And the other thing I want you to keep in mind is the suckers are going to be bigger, closer to the body, and then as they go out on the tentacle, on the arm, um, they are going to get smaller. So your little suckers are gonna start big and then as you go, they're gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller. So I'm gonna mix all three of my colors together, the blue, the purple, and a little bit of black to make sure I get a nice dark color. And I need a little bit more blue. Okay. So, I'm loading my brush up with the dark color. I'm gonna kind of swoop it back and forth a couple of times to get rid of any excess paint on there. And then I'm just gonna start going in and doing kind of these like curved like little swatches. Now, the other thing you wanna keep in mind is you're not going to go across this entire thing and do this. I know that's what you're gonna think that you should do, but the reason why we're not doing that is because this is what the suckers look like if the arm itself is laying totally flat against the thing and we're looking straight up at it. But that's not how we see these tentacles. These tentacles, I mean these arms, dang it. Appendages. <laughs> these appendages. That's not how we see these appendages. These appendages are actually, a lot of them are the side view. They're turning away from us. We're only seeing the side view of it. So if you were to take something that had those bumps and put it on the side, you would actually only see them raised. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. You would only see them raised off of the arm. You wouldn't see that full circle shape. So I don't want you to go on the arm and do this full circle shape because the perspective of how we're seeing that tentacle is changing the shape of it. So, so they're kind of, they're, they're just this kind of raised curved thing and then as I'm getting closer to the edge, they're going to get smaller. 
if you get a big one in there, it's not a huge deal, don't stress. And then the same thing on this one, start out big. And then this one we see a little bit more of it, like the bottom of the appendage. So I'm going to do them kind of a little bit side by side. And remember they're still getting smaller. Now I'm trying to get them staggered so they're not perfectly right next to each other like a pair going down. It's kind of like staggered going down. And try to keep them small. Okay. So far so good. And then these are kind of big. And I'm kind of doing like, they're not, um, the, the marks that I'm making, they're curved, but then the bigger ones, since they're, since they're bigger, and I'm sure they would actually be a little bit thicker, is they kind of go up and down, kind of like that. So that's kind of the shapes we're making. So they kind of stick out. And then they also are going to stick out from the appendage as well. So don't be afraid to go. These are supposed to go outside of the outline we have. Don't feel like you have to fit all of these marks within the outline of the octopus. They are gonna stick out from it. Should I have told you that before arm three? Probably. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Now in my example here, you can see more of the under, under part of that arm on my actual painting here, because this is all really dark, I'm going to just pretend that the arm has turned so you're not seeing any more of that under part. And that is okay. You know, your painting's gonna do its own thing sometimes and don't stress if it doesn't look exactly like mine. There's not a single one way to paint this. So if your arm is more turned, that's easier than me trying to go in and lighten that area and try and make it the under part. Does that make sense? Just let it be. Not a big deal. Don't get mad at it. Just let it go? Let it go. Can we say that? I don't know. Does Disney have... <laughs> Maybe it's in air quotes. Let it go. Let it go. Let some of it go. Let's we'll just we'll just lightly change it. <laughs> That's not plagiarism either. <laughs> okay. We're going to just keep on keeping on going through these. Although those got really big. That's all right, not a big deal. And another thing you can do, I feel like these got like so big and the shapes got a little bit funky. If that ever happens, we were just like, those shapes are weird. A little trick that I like to do is I just take my brush and that's a little bit damp and I just softly blend some of this out so then it's like, I don't really know, it's kind of messy and funky. Isn't that cool? There we go. And then now those shapes aren't so bad. Those shapes aren't like distracting Aggressive. you. That was a great word. Yeah. Those shapes aren't. I was thinking of appendages. Like aggressive <laughs> just came out. Those suckers are no longer aggressive. We soften them up a bit. Okay. And this one, you can see a little bit of the suckers, but not much. And then they're going out here. And this one, we're seeing more of that underbelly, so if you want to double layer them, you can. Yeah, that looks good. Back here a little bit. And then try not to put your wrist in what you just painted. I probably should have started all the way to the left, so then if you're right-handed, you wouldn't run into this problem, but here we are. You had the left in mind. I did. I really only care about you. See? Okay, what you might see me doing is I put down a color, and if that brush stroke is a little bit too thick, I just hit my brush off my paper towel. It just soaks up that excess paint and water, so then I can get a thinner brush stroke. I'm going to actually thicken this line a little bit the top part of it. So you can either do two layers on that arm. I just wanted to thicken it up. 
I don't know, felt right to me. Okay, one left. And then this one I'm gonna kinda double, double layer it a bit. Remember to keep these marks a little bit smaller. Yes. Yes. That looks great. Okay. So that's it for step five. Um, now the very last step, we're going to put in these little beady eyeballs and then it's just detail works. And whenever I say details, I mean just doing those finishing touches that are really going to kind of help your painting. Like for me, I'm looking at my eyes and I feel like the shadow around my eyes gave my circle, like it kind of has some sharp edges and I want to kind of make it a smoother circle. So I'm just going to adjust that right now. So I'm just going to take a dark color and I'm just going to go in and kind of try and smooth out the circle shape around my eye. And because I don't want it to look like they're like an outline, I'm gonna just turn that into my shadow and blend that out. And I'm gonna do more of a shadow around the right side of the eye because I want it to be clear that this thing is sticking up entirely from the head. So that means there's gonna be a shadow on the right side too. And remember to kind of blend it out because we don't want blocky paintings. There we go. I like that shape much better. And I think I'm actually going to do another layer on the top part. Darken that top part a little just around the rim, top half of the eye. Okay, now we're going to do the eyeball. Now, you can do the eyeball a couple of ways. If you just want to do a tiny little black dot in there, you are more than welcome to do that. What I'm going to try and do, and which is what I did with my outline, is I'm actually going to try and make a tiny white dot. So I'm just going to paint the black around it and leave a tiny white space in the middle. You do whatever you feel comfortable doing. So I have a little circle here that I've been avoiding, and I'm just going to use pure black and leave a tiny white dot in the middle just like that now this one this black is just going to poke out from the side here that one i'm not concerned about leaving a little tiny white dot in there because that eye is actually turning away from us we wouldn't really see that glare anyway so but i do want it to kind of be poking out from the eye uh, like the eye socket to make sure we know that it's three-dimensional And then as always in your last steps, this is where you kind of take a look and see if there's really any other adjustments you need to make. For me, I feel like the top of the head needs to be a little bit darker. So I'm just gonna take my six and just do another layer right on top here. And remember to blend it out because right here that looks like a splotch. But if I take a damp brush and soften these edges, then it's a smoother transition. That head has so many cool textures on it. I know. Yes, it's so cool. And so really, like, embrace those funky textures that you're going to get with watercolor. Really play with it. Play with dropping in water drops and color and just letting it move and seeing what it does. It's so fun to just play. That's really what you're doing. And if you mess it up, it's really not. It's a piece of paper. It's, it's paint. Like, throw it away and do another one. It's really not a big deal. And if you think that you're bad because you mess up, let me tell you, I mess up so much. It's just part of it. 
and I think you just kind of get used to it the more you do it and you just see it's not a big deal. So just kind of embrace that there will be times where you will mess up a painting and that's okay. Just keep going with it or throw it away and do another one. Um, if you painted this with us, I can't wait to see it, so share it. You can post it in uh, Instagram and tag us in it. Our Instagram name is Let's Go Make Art or you can hashtag Let's Make Art. Are those two different names? Yes, they are. Sorry for the confusion. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can share it in, in Facebook and we have this wonderful Facebook group that I talked about earlier. Didn't I talk about it earlier? I think I did. I don't remember. We've done two tutorials. Today. It's called uh, Let's Make Art Together. You do have to request to join it, but it's this really encouraging group where we celebrate wherever you are. And uh, I know that we get really intimidated when we see people post their art because we think, oh, mine isn't that good, I shouldn't post it. But post it anyway. I know it's so scary, but it gives other people the courage to try it. And then it gets rid of that idea that everybody does everything perfectly. Because the reason we think that is because people don't post their beginning paintings. They don't post their mess ups. They don't share that information, but everybody has them. So I just want us to get used to just sharing our work wherever we are, and that will help other people be brave and do it also. So go ahead and do that. And again, you can get all of these supplies that we use at our website, letsmakeart.com. We sell this in a kit. We have a subscription box that is an amazing deal if you want to look at that. And, uh, I think that's it, right? Okay, you guys are awesome. Bye.